Hey gang, we are live. Guess where we are? Can you guess? Can you guess? We're in Rhode Island. We are in historic New England, Rhode Island. I just got in last night. I've already shot three stories this morning. Got up really early. So I see that's Arizona time. I got up at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> so I'm all out of whack. I was like, what is that, four hour difference? So what's going on? We are in a town called Rentham. It's not too far from Lincoln, Rhode Island, I guess. Woonsocket, Woonsocket, I should say. Tommy the Cat is first up. Mr. Rhode Island himself. We're gonna see you tomorrow night, buddy. Intrepid Freddy Cats here. Sue, CL, Butch White, Cheryl, K, Carlita's Way. You got a lot of you guys coming back, love it. Trisha H is here. Can you guys hear me okay? Does the picture look okay? We're at a very noisy place. It's a little bit windy right now. This morning was great. It was here. We got the fall colors just starting to kick in. Depends where you're at. But we're gonna get our money's worth today. How you guys doing? Lorraine's here. Susan. I gotta give a shout out to Steve and Stephanie, who I think it was Stephanie who emailed me. A while back she said you got to stop and there's a good story here at the cemetery that we're going to talk about a young woman who was murdered by her husband way way back we'll talk about what happened we did some research Deb found out and I think we're when I say we're going to get our money's worth today I think we're going to I'm going to take you in the car about three miles away to go to a really epic cemetery. this is a small cemetery we're going to maybe spend 10 minutes here I'm going to take you for a little New England drive. We're just going to drive along. I'm not going to be able to read your chat much. I'm going to give you a view of Rentham. Very historic town. Looks like cool churches. Cool downtown and the cemetery we want to go see has some really cool mausoleums, vaults, and old stuff. And it's right downtown. So we can be like tourists today in New England. You guys up for that? All right. Hey, Judy Clark from Kansas. All right, so uh, why don't we take a walk? Let me see what you guys are been up to here. It's a beautiful day. Tomorrow, I think the weather's gonna turn yucky. Hey, Teresa, thanks for the five bucks. I appreciate it. We're gonna see the super old stones we'd like to see, right? And somebody got a promotion. Lori Holston got a promotion. Congratulations. What do you do? Are you a nurse? I don't know why. I just think you're a caregiver. No, I don't know. Let me know what you are. What did you get a promotion for? So I'm going to show you some old stones here. This is going back to 1816 in the 71st year of his age. Look at that. Edward White. Aren't these beautiful slate stones? I think these come from Vermont. And I'm going to focus on some of these insignias. Remember, I did the Norwich story, Benedict Arnold's mother. And we, we talked a lot about these stones, especially the ones with the skulls. Really cool stuff. Alice is here. Way to go, Alice. If I missed it, let me know what you do. What did you get a promotion for? I'm trying to multitask here. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I got the mic going because we got some wind. Hey Joy, how you doing? Yeah, Carlita's Way, it is, there's a lot of cool stones here. This is a very noisy area. There are just, uh, I think there's a big construction project going on here, but that's okay. Look at this monument. The cemetery here, Charles, is in Rentham, Rhode Island. And the cemetery is called Gerald with a G. G-O-U-R-L. D, I think it is. Here's Cheever, Benjamin Cheever, born in 1813. So uh, there's some stones that go way, way back here that we're going to see. And I'll kind of freeze it here a little bit. Yeah, Tommy, New England, I, you know, I thought Chicago has some good history, but New England is the best where, well, it's where the country started. I shouldn't say it's where the, uh, the Europeans came and started the European. I mean, Alice, right? You got Alice, the, the, the Native Americans, First Nation, Indians, 
all synonymous. Go back 10,000 years here. I think Atlanta, we had the creek, right? And the Appalachia. And I think in this area, it was, well, I know Illinois, we had Potawatomi. Can't remember the name. Seminoles, who was here? Who was here? Okay, I think I missed it. Someone help me. What is what is Lori? What did you, what did you do, what are you doing that you got promoted for? Yeah, UK June. I'm I'm hoping to come next summer. I have about 80 stories between Scotland, Edinburgh, and London. I'm already set. I gotta weed it down to like 15 stories at the most. I want to do a little tourism. I mean, these actually stories take a lot of preparation. The leaves are just starting to turn. This cemetery, the stuff I shot this morning, I was in some other places in Rhode Island and in Massachusetts, and the leaves were turning more than they are here. This is farther south. I was way north Massachusetts. So it looks like there is a difference. So I'm going to tell you a story here of a woman that was shot by her husband here in 1800s. So I'm going to read to you a little article and her grave, her grave is like right over there. So we'll just putz around here a little bit. The Block Island tribe, <laughs> Pequot too. Yeah, yeah. But what's the big Oh, I can't think of the big tribe that was here. And I talked about it too on the episode, uh, not Norwich, there was another episode I did. There's my rental, my rental Denali. I flew into Boston Logan last night, so I don't have my truck. I am here and then I'm uh, Sunday, I'm flying home and I hope I can get out of here with the storm that's coming. I, hopefully it, it doesn't, it's not all they predicted. But the cool thing is tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, I'm doing all inside stuff. You know, uh, tomorrow night we're having that little talk, whoever can come, at the Hearthside House Museum, House, Hearthside Home Museum. And then I'm doing some indoor filming on Saturday, so I'm good. After this live stream, I've got like five, epi four episodes already done, so I'm, I'm good. But okay, enough blabbering. I'm going to read from the newspaper, okay? It's a short article on what happened, then we're going to go to her grave. And then after that... I'm thinking I take you in the car. We're going to go to a really cool cemetery. Not that this isn't a cool cemetery, but the cla the downtown Rentham Cemetery, which is pretty big, and it's got some really cool mausoleums and stuff. So the article the article starts by saying tragedy at Rentham: a wife shot by her husband. On Saturday last, about six o'clock, a man by the name of George R. Lewis shot his wife Caroline through the neck with a fowling piece, F-O-W-L-I-N-G. That would be a rifle for hunting birds. And then struck her on the temple with the breech of the piece, fracturing the skull and shivering the gun stock. I think shivering is probably shattering. This has taken off some old newspaper. Now, as I read this, I'll try to get you guys some uh, gravestones here so you can see. I'll look for the ones that have the clearer inscriptions. An inquest called by Edward C. Craig of Sheldonville. I don't know where that is. I think that's probably, it'd have to be nearby here, right? So there was an inquest held and disclosed the following facts. Lewis is a young American man, about 22 years of age, who has been employed for six months by John A. Craig, a farmer of Rentham. He was born in excellent character up to the time of the commission of the deed. About two years ago, he met a Miss Green, a very pretty girl, his cousin. <laughs> Did you catch that? She's a very pretty girl and she was his cousin. Not his second cousin, not his third cousin, but his cousin. Look, there's a big prayer on here. I don't know if we can read that. Keep it there. She had not born an unexceptional character. I'm sorry. She had not 
I, I think there's a typo on this, but according to the report, before her marriage, for a year or more, she conducted herself with propriety. And that's not good, right? Within a few months, she had been absent for several days at a time on many occasions and her irregularities were a constant source of anxiety to her husband. Now on Saturday afternoon, about half past five o'clock, he went to the house of his mother-in-law. Wouldn't that be his aunt? <laughs> if that's his cousin or... Anyway, his mother-in-law and he says he detected his wife in criminality with another man. A scene of violence followed and he left the house, probably with the other man as he put his pants back on. On his way back to Mr. Craig's house, his wife overtook him and he tried to persuade her to go home and told her that he would forgive her. All would be forgiven. She replied that she should do what she pleased and when and where and with whom she pleased. Let me point this down a little so you guys can see. There's a good inscription you can read. Well, after she said that, he shot her with the following piece. I mean, I shouldn't laugh, but the words they used back then, you know, instead of rifle, fouling piece. The latter account is his own, which means this is Basically, his account is this. He instantly went to Mr. Craig. He told him what he had done and why and where he would find the body. He was in a terrible state of excitement and when asked if he planned it, said no. He thought of it at the instant and had done it before he knew it. The deed was committed in an open pasture near two public roads in full view of Mr. Craig's house. I'm guessing Mr. Craig is his uncle or her father. And this, together with his previous excellent character and conduct and the character of the other parties, gives probability to his story. Well, we don't doubt the story, but is that supposed to mean he, he was okay doing that? That's kind of what this article leads you to believe it goes on to say he has the sympathy of all who have known him in Rentham he says he took the gun to kill a woodchuck and it appeared that he often had done so so did not load the gun himself and he had no ammunition beside that in the gun well doesn't that sound suspicious to you? Right there, you know, I'm just reading this. Now, when you go bird hunting with a, a fowling piece, you bring ammunition, you don't just bring one. But if you're planning to kill your wife, you just bring one load. So anyway, the article concludes by saying that the coroner did his work and a verdict that the deceased came upon her death from a gunshot wound and a blow from the gun in the hands of her husband. Well, big surprise. So my question was, was there any, no punishment for this guy? And we got to credit Deb, because she went back and found a little tiny article, a little tiny article that said what happened to this guy. And it's kind of cool because the article has, it starts with a little hand going like that. <laughs> and then the words start. It's like 1700s article. And it's just a couple of sentences to the article. And it just talks about what happened. He did go to court. It said, in the Norfolk Court of Common Pleas, Judge Perkins sentenced George R. Lewis of Rentham for manslaughter to 10 years in the state prison. So, still seems like kind of a light sentence, huh? So 
So here we got. So what do you guys think of that story? Because here is her grave right here. Yeah, they sure had manners in the 1700s. Now, I have a flower in the car and I forgot to bring it. So before we leave, or when I come back after this is all done, I'll try to remember to come back here. And But she's got flowers, it looks like. But here's the stone. And thank you again to Steve and Stephanie. I think it was Stephanie who reached out to me to give me this story. And the reason I know about the other cemetery is because I went there first searching for the stone and of course I was not going to find it. I was at the wrong cemetery. So there you go. Well, yeah, in those days, that's a rhubarb. That's a very good point. People did not. That's probably like a life sentence, right? So there it is. Now, my question to you is, should we get in that white SUV, rent a car, and pop over to an epic cemetery? I mean, we're in Rhode Island. Let's get our money's worth, right? You guys want to go there with me? I say, let's go. It's beautiful stone, yes. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. All right, everybody's saying let's go, but you can't say let's go. You got to say L-E-S-G-O-G-O, L-E-T-S-G-O. Let's go. Very sad story. And we're, that's history. That's what's really cool here. We're just like looking at, we're looking at history here. Look at all those. I love those old stones, those old slate stones. That's the real thing. Okay, let's go. Let's go for a little drive. Let's say I haven't tried this before. So I can't watch what you guys are saying too much. It'll take like five, six minutes to get there. You get a little taste of what New England looks like. Cool. I think we have a good signal here. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys right here. Right on my tripod and let's get rolling here. Gosh, I got the best weather today. Isn't this fantastic? All right, let's do, let's get driving. All right, well, I won't hold it in front of my face, but you all can see. Right on, Ali, history. We live for history. We love this stuff. All right, we wanna go left here. There's a lot of traffic. So let's not be in a rush as I peel out. <laughs> All right, we're going this way. I'm going to go by memory. Hopefully you don't get lost. Yeah, blue skies, white clouds, but I don't think it... Oh, hold on. Garth Brooks just decided to uh, pay us a visit. Do you like Garth Brooks? All right. Yeah, this weather's not going to last, guys. It's going to... It's gonna turn, unfortunately. But I got the, uh, we'll have the live stream, we'll get this in, and look at, there's a beautiful lake over there. You see that? So we're in Rentham, Rentham. And of course, the light sees me coming. I'll say this, it sees me coming and it turns red. Oh, here comes Ron. Hurry up, do the switch. I always tell my kids, it's the little elves in the box. It's those little elves in the box, in that box, like right over there. And they're waiting for me. And when I come, the light's been green only a short time, but here he comes, let's switch it. So what's going on? Marlene Pearson loves Garth Brooks. Yeah, he's, he's still going strong. Judy Clark, history and mystery, love it. Beth Kruger, no rain here. Where are you at, Norwalk? Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we're good here. I think today we're good. And then tomorrow it starts going downhill. Maybe they'll be, uh, maybe they'll be wrong. What do you think? This is pretty fun driving along. Yeah, as long as I watch the road. Now I can't read, I'm gonna get going, so I'm not gonna read your comments that much. I can glance. 
So I'm coming to Lincoln tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow night. I'm not staying in Lincoln. I'm staying at an undeclosed, un, unenclosed. Boy, I hope it's, I, it better not be unenclosed. I'm staying at an undisclosed location. A secret tent in a graveyard. I'm Tommy, I'm staying on Mount Tom. Did you guys see the story I did here last year? The legend of the peddler? He was on Mount Tom. All right, let's get around this truck. I don't like trucks. Am I speeding? No. I'm only going 25 right now. All right, let's slow it down, boys. Yeah, we're on a road trip in Rentham, Rhode Island. Hey, look, look at the pumpkins and the farmer and all of that. I can't look, but I'll show you guys. All right, we're coming into town here, guys. This isn't the main part of Rentham, but this is, again, thank you to Steve and Stephanie. Stephanie, good job. Stephanie was helping me with all of this. Let's see what we got here. We got to stay in the right. Let's see what we got over here. All right, I think that's the last light before we get to town. All right, watch out for the mailman. We're almost there, guys. We're getting there. Really cool church you're going to love. How's the picture? We good? <laughs> Hey, some people have some good Halloween decorations out. They like Halloween here in Rhode Island. Tommy, you coming tomorrow night? All right. Sorry, I can't read your comments because it would be putting myself and others at risk. I can kind of glance, but I'm gonna. So we're a little bit of Rhode Island, guys. Beautiful here. I was down in Exeter this morning, down south. That is really beautiful. I mean, most of, Ro every part of Rhode Island I've seen so far is just amazing. There's the antique shops. We just passed a really cool antique shop. And a lot of these houses, is that a, a salt box? No. But these, I mean, look at, look at a lot of these houses are from the 1800s, maybe. I mean, we're talking 1700s, guys. Look at this stone wall, see the stone wall? That, that's probably from the 1700s, look at that house. Wow. Cool color blue. All right, guys, we're almost there, I promise. Exeter is amazing and full of vampire graveyards. Yeah, well, I didn't do Mercy Brown. I'll just tell you that, because that's been worn out on YouTube. It's so funny, there's a story that comes out and then everybody has to do it on top of each other. I, I just w would not. I, it's a good story, but I like the one, Tommy, you got me in Vermont, at Woodstock, Vermont. You guys should look up the vampire story. I think it's called Vampires in New England that I did. That I really had fun with that one. Literally, the day before I left New England is flying out. Tommy, I didn't know Tommy then, and then he's like, hey, you got to do this story. I literally dropped everything and went to Woodstock, which is a Woodstock, Vermont is a really cool cool destination all right we gotta slow down here i think we're we got us okay now we are in the downtown downtown rentham now i'm going to show you this church here straight ahead it's beautiful look at this a lot of shops here guys a lot of cool stuff Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful church? Look at that with the big steeple up there, huh? All right, I'm not looking, I'm just pointing. I'm looking this way. All right, the cemetery is up here on the left. Now I spent an hour here looking for Caroline's grave and I did run into, oh, here's another nice church, Trinity Episcopal Church. Look at that. And then here is the, this is the town cemetery here. So let's go in here. 
Now this, this has some really cool stuff going on. So it's probably good that I stopped here. Okay, we're here. Now, I'm gonna park. There's really nowhere to park like right here. So I'm gonna go around, see where that white truck is right there. That's where I'm going, but check it out, guys. Huh? Look at that mausoleum, we gotta check that out. Oh, look at that underground crypt right there. Do you see it? And look at this vault. We gotta check this vault out. Yeah, good stuff. Good history here. And this has a lot of, now this is a big cemetery. Straight ahead is the newer section. Lots and lots of graves. So as I recall, how did I do this before? I'm going to um, back in. Oh, there's Resurrection Mary. Is that her? No, that's somebody with a backpack. Do you remember that episode I did in Chicago with Resurrection Mary? It was at Forest Home Cemetery. Okay, we're going backwards now. Ready? I don't know how this is going to work. All right, let's keep our eye on the road here. No chatting. You guys can chat, but not me. I don't want to run over. Boy, you run over a gravestone. That's really going to be ugly city. Oh, that guy parked in my spot. That's where I wanted to park. That's where I parked last time. Okay, so I'm going to have to, I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to have to park right here. So, uh, you know, let me see. Yeah. All right, let's just do it. Okay, you guys ready? Let's get out and let's look around. This is a live stream, Rentham, Rhode Island. That's where Tommy the Cat is from. And let's just dive right in. What do you say? Yeah, the weather is beautiful. It's like upper 60s. It's fantastic. Look at these stones. There's so many cool stones to look at. Remember your flower. Yes, Bernadette. I will remember to go back. Thank you. I didn't want to do it and bore you guys with like too much walking in the live stream. Sacred to the memory of Susan, wife of Lemuel, Lemuel Brown, Providence. She died in 1855, she was 82. So if you do the math, 1776, like she was born right in the, near the revolution. Look at these stones, will you? How cool, huh? Yeah. All right, I'll look for ones that have cool, inscriptions and I shouldn't say cool I should say readable like this one look for stuff that's kind of different have you ever thought of looking into the woman when in Dallas she was hosting a Super Bowl party no send me an email on that I don't even know who that is do you know how many people are going missing it's crazy now this here's another one of these symbols see that I hope the picture's clear. Yeah, this, uh, these people were born in the 1700s. When you see these old slate graves like this, that's 1700s time. Now look at these two little ones here for children. Let's take a look with the flashlight and I'll see if we can, let me see if I can get this, hold on. What a stupid light. Every time I turn this on, it says a strobe blinking. All right. So I don't know if you guys can see that. All right. Warren Charles, son of Warren and Miranda. So he died. Can't see that. Four months old. I think it's a baby, huh? Susan, daughter, who died October 9th, 1842. She was only six months old and 27 days. Oh, you know, it's probably, probably those diseases. 
right? Olivia. Hey, Gail, watching from Texas. Cool. All right, let's go this way. There's another one. I'm going to try and focus on the artwork, too. Uh, each of these stones from the early 1800s, people who lived in the 1700s, have a lot of these different insignias. And the slate, look at that. With the sun coming sideways, you don't even need the flashlight. Age 64 years, Mr. Oliver Pond. Oh, look at this big stone. Look at that. Hannah, wife of General Oliver Pond. Who was General Oliver Pond? Probably some famous guy. And again, a little the artwork's a little bit different. Here's General Oliver Pond right here. You guys like, are you liking these stones, you guys? You wanna see more? Go between these. Let's go this way. No, those are not Mason symbols, not even close. Mason symbols are like the, the well, the odd fellows are the three rings. You know, the three links of the chain. And Mason signal is the, um, the compass and the square. That's, that's not, this is way, I don't, well, maybe I'm wrong, you tell me. That's, I don't think that's a Mason symbol. Uh, symbol. There's a different one, look at this one. Can you guys see that or is it blurry? Like, we have a really good signal here, I'm hoping. This is Colonel Benjamin Hawes. He died the 10th day of March. And it doesn't say, it's hard to read, but I see 1813. So he's, he goes back, he goes back to the revolution, man. That's what you gotta love about New England. These stones are so, oh, I could just sit in this section. We gotta keep moving here, guys. Let's go this way. I wanna show you that vault. Look at this stone. Wow, what's pretty cool here is everybody, the people are, see how they, uh, well, that one's missing pieces, but this one here. Six. Look at this one. Oh, let's look at that vault we saw on the way in. Look at that. Wow. How is that even balanced? I'll bet that's pinned to stay that way. So here's a vault with a very interesting symbol on top. Yeah, revolutionary, right? General Pond's first name. I don't know what his first name was, but look at this. This is a slate top. Look at this symbol, will you? Let me get a try and hold it still for you. Isn't that neat? So this is. Try to so you can. I, this is in another language. 1788, guys. Look at that. 1788 now we are going back and that's when the person died and isn't it remarkable the shape of this how old are you yes i do mind <laughs> i'm old enough we have a guy in woods wound socket gregory who is tries to fix stones oh that's cool so yeah i did a story in wound socket this morning that's the funniest name, Wound Socket. Can't get over that name. Only in Rhode Island, only in New England, right? All right, let's check out this vault, see if we can get in. I didn't bring my snake camera on this trip. Ooh, look at that door. Cobb. Look at that. I know, I'm sure it doesn't open. But look at that. That's where the... The lock would go. Oh, wow, wait a minute. You know what? This could open. I'm not going to open it. 
Oh, you could get a snake camera in there, maybe. Yeah, that's a big iron door. I think you, I might have heard the guy. Yeah, that was Cobb inside. Actually, I'm 82. That's my age. I'll admit it. I look older than my age. I know, 82. I look like I'm, I'm in my 90s. Is that a coffin-sized door? Well, it's not a casket size. That's a good question. Let's go back here. No, yeah, it's very small. A wood coffin would fit in there, and from when that was built, that is... That's a wood, that's for a wood coffin. Holy cow, look at the size of this thing. You guys will never find out my age. <laughs> you can guess all you want, but I'm triple digits. I'm a, I'm a reincarnated person from the 1800s from Arizona. Actually, I'm a vampire. Look at this. Now, is this community crypt? What is this, guys? 1871, so that would mean it's not a community crypt. That means that this is someone's mausoleum with no name. Oh man, thank you, Janelle Smith, for the $20. You know what, I have not been paying attention. Ron is a vampire. Yeah, you better you better not come tomorrow night. Look at that. Look at that. That's neat. Yeah, wood coffin rhubarb. Wood coffin would fit, but not a not a casket, but remember 1700s. You know what this reminds me of? Reminds me of the old monitor ships on the river, Civil War. Those big rivets, the big modded metal, pitted, pitted metal. Neat, okay, no luck getting in there. Let's look over here. I'm not 82, I'm, I'm over 100. I told you, I'm reincarnated. That is a vampire crypt, maybe. Back there, that could be a vampire. Remember that vampire story I did on Cape Cod? I think it was Tommy the Cat again who suggested that. That story had a really creepy crypt in it, if you remember. This is J.C. Cowell. Oh, there's a crack up here to look in. You see anything? Hello. Now. Look at that. You just pull this up, except it is, you'd have to get a tool and then you could open this thing. Anybody in there? I would love to, you know, I bet there's lead line coffins in there. This has to be, I'm gonna put this at early 1800s. Yeah, I was right, look at this. Well, maybe not, late 1800s on the top, Joseph. Look this one up, 1807 to 1834. So the wife did not live long. In their 20s, right, am I right? Daughter, da 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 da, you have Emily, you have Sarah. So there appears to be four in here. I'm always looking for openings. No, I'm not 63. You are incorrect. You are incorrect. The door's cracked. What should I do? So here is a, another place where there's nothing, but it there, it's, is marble, but there's no writing on it. So I find that interesting. Just like this, and it's set at the same depth. 
but no writing. Hmm. Not sure. No, you can keep guessing. I told you I'm over 100. Let's see. Okay, so this way there's a lot of newer graves. Newer being late 1800s, early 1900s. So let's go over here. Get a crowbar. God, I would love to see in there. I thought I could pull that bolt up, but it's it's pretty pretty secure. Elizabeth Wick, Wicks. Elizabeth Wicks. Prudence, wife of Joseph Wicks. How old was she? She was 83, it looks like. Yeah, 83. Well, let's get back to looking for those designs. I'm doing good, Lolly. How are you? Where are you from? Doing good. Let's get back to looking at those. These are newer stone. I'm going to get back. Let's go back this way. Let's get to the center. I want to get to the old stones. I can't read the longer comments. You should explore more dark mausoleum when you're chambered. <laughs> Sue Harrell, I don't know what you're talking about. But if you like the getting trapped in a mausoleum, just watch next Sunday. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday. The Halloween just before, the Halloween, uh, the Halloween, the Sunday just before Halloween. That's when uh, you'll see me almost get locked in the mausoleum. That was not good. Only time that's almost happened in my life where I did put myself at risk. There's an interesting stone here. The doctor, 72 years old, 1841, so mid-1800s. Here's another old slate, but I don't think there's any pattern on top. Do you guys remember the grave of Mary Nassen? Well, no. Was it Mary Nassen, the one in uh, Maine? Harry, uh, Henry Mortimer here. She had like a really interesting, it looked like a voodoo, like a voodoo kind of symbol at the top, as I recall. Well, they said she was a witch. Callista Heffron. December 31st, 1861, New Year's Eve. Ooh, that's kind of not so good. Let's go this way. I've got some good wrought iron here. Jesse's in Massachusetts, too. Yeah, the drive up to northern Massachusetts from here was beautiful this morning. No, not even close to the class of 79. Let's see, where should we go? Let's look over here. Oh, here's some cool stones. These are different. Jemima Hawes, now there's a name I haven't seen before on any stone ever. Jemima Hawes. We gotta put the flashlight on this one, guys. Her daughter is right behind. I don't know if this is gonna help. Ah, I can't really read it. I just wanna see her age. I think it says 60, no, I can't. Can't read it. Darn, Jemima. There's her daughter, Julia. better look at that stone. 
Thanks, Marlene. You're very sweet. Forever 29. Here's Julia's stone. Boy, I'm sure glad I figured out this landscape stuff. That was really bugging me. I thought YouTube was putting all that on everybody. But it's just a new setting. Don Carlos. He was 51, died in 1848. Let's see what else we got. So this is the front of the cemetery. This is the front. Here's some more cool wrought iron. You were born and raised in Augusta, Georgia. Oh, Augusta, Maine. I was going to say, I was going to say Augusta, Augusta, Georgia, Jesse. Two years ago, my husband and daughter moved to Massachusetts. Cool. Yeah. You know, I think my favorite state here in New England is Vermont. I like, I like them all, but Vermont, there's something about Vermont. That's cool. This is the Reverend Samuel, M-A-N-N, -N, died at 72. He was in the ministry for 49 years. He died in, oh, he died in 1719, guys. Can you read that? He died in 1719, he was 72. This is uh, going back, mid 1600s. So what nationality, where would he have emigrated from? Man, M-A-N-N. -N. So 72 is like 1650s he was born, 1650s. Wow. That was just, a, and that was just a style to, so people wouldn't walk on graves and to demark the family plot. And ornamental, decorative. Mainly that, mainly they did it, were asking about why the fencing. If you had extra money, you could do that. The sun's at a perfect angle where I don't need to put the flashlight on these. If they're facing this way. Maybe he was Dutch. M-A-N-N. -N. Yeah, is that, isn't that German? I thought that was German. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's take a quick look at this stone here. Loving the history, guys. Oh, I love these stones. This one's in really great shape. Look at that. So this appears to be a husband and wife here on this stone. Don't really want to walk. I'm going to step on the edge and then I'm going to hold this out so you can get a closer view. Look how good, good shape that is. Daniel, I'd felt 1816 to 1870. Harriet Rawson, his wife, 1805 to 1860. It's really in good shape, considering all the weather. Germany, right, Rhubarb? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was thinking German. All right, I'm going to I'm going to walk back towards my car. The reason being, I want to just before we close some more symbolism of the old slate the old slate stones and I do see some up here so we're going to take a quick look I think that's my mo I, I'm most intrigued with the symbolism of these 1700 slate stones that they placed at the very top there's so many different I've seen so many different kinds So here we go. That one you cannot tell. I've seen these before. Okay, here you go. Here's a couple of good ones. Memory of Samuel Thales, who died 1848, 84. So he's, 
He was born in the 1700s. Look at that prayer. So look at that symbol, the weeping tree with the urn. And here's another urn. This would be his wife. She died November 2nd, 1842. She was 63. And the sun, guys, is at a perfect angle, perpendicular to the west. As you can see, oh, look at this one. Now here's a mason. I have not seen one like this before, but the symbolism is definitely mason. With the eye, the all-seen eye. Boy, this one's really elaborate. You're gonna love this. Sacred to the memory of Captain Timothy Whiting. We gotta find out who he was, Captain. Was that nautical or was he in the Revolutionary War? So he died in 1818, 57. Probably in his 20s, right? Early 20s. George Washington, right? So look at that. That is Masonic, guys. And that is incredible shape. Look at the eye. That is incredible. Thanks, Fran, for the five bucks. Appreciate it. Very generous. Oh, I'm glad we saw that one. Here's another one. So, so I haven't seen any skull in any skulls or anything. We saw that at Norwich a lot, which I think those graves are a little older. Have you guys seen the Norwich episode? There's another one with the weeping tree. I've seen this one a lot. Whoops, sorry about that. Ah, it's a gimbal. There we go. There's a really old one here. Gosh, I could do this all day, but I think we're coming up on the old hour. So guys, we'll look at a couple more. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Here's another one. Look how thin these are. They're very thin, and it's just amazing how they hold up. You know, 300 years. This 200 years, almost 200 years. What's on the other side of the fence? Uh, that's the church. That's one of the churches. If you missed the beginning, we drove by and I gave you a shot of that church. The Episcopal church, that is. And then they have their own little graveyard there, it looks like. Yeah, so, okay guys. That was fun. I think I'm gonna wrap it here, guys. Gotta get back. Gotta do some editing, get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow night's gonna be fun, whoever comes. Hope to see you. Looking forward to seeing anyone who can come to the Hearthside House Museum. And seven to 9 p.m. tomorrow night in Lincoln, Rhode Island. What else? Sunday night, we got to, it's just gonna keep ramping up for Halloween. Sorry guys, I, I just, you know, some people are not into Halloween, but I'm into Halloween, so we got a lot of good. In fact, um, in the lineup that I gave you guys, I'm adding two episodes from here. Two of the four episodes I did, I'm gonna insert in Halloween week. So we're gonna, we're gonna go crazy. Two episodes a week and then Halloween week's just gonna be like, Crazy, crazy. So thanks for coming. And I guess I'll see you guys. There's an episode coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, 2 p.m. Central Time. And then I guess I'll see you, whoever I don't see, tomorrow night. Oh, today's Thursday. What am I thinking? It probably came out already. What time is it? It's coming out. It's coming out. It's the poltergeist story. And then I'll see you guys Sunday night. Eh? No, I won't see you. No live stream Sunday. I'm flying back all the way to Phoenix. I'll lose like a million. No, I will pick up hours, so that's good. So Sunday I'm out. I will not see you. There's a good, there's a good premiere, you know, Halloween related. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. That's enough for now. Thanks for coming. Great seeing you guys. And I am out of here for New England. Love it.
Here comes the weather. I can see the clouds coming. See ya.